Well, I noticed that the more empowered I feel on a relative level, like when I have high confidence and high optimism and more like crystallized momentum and focus, the deeper my meditations are, the more sort of clearly I can realize deeper states. But mm -hmm. if I'm more, yeah. So I don't know how people do it otherwise. Yeah. So, and I agree with you, that's in some ways, that's ideal, is to have an empowered individual state that has a profound interest to the realization and the reabsorption of all of its components into that state of oneness, or beyondness, ultimately. Plus the conviction that's already the case. Then you have three components, you have all three domains aligned, and then you'll have the most clear, pristine, profound, knowledgeable, direct, holistic, all-pervasive realization of the way things really are. Because all the levels line up. So not only do you know it at some level, not only do you experience it directly as sort of a meditative state or a state of aware perceiving of it, but also your expression and your your anchoring of that is potent, is powerful. Um, <clears throat> but, and I agree with you, and with my own experience, confirms that. And this is why I've always blended empowerment and enlightenment, at least to some degree. Because if you're in a personally weak state, typically you're not going to be penetrating any new level of consciousness or new insight. You're not going to maintain concentration. You're not going to transcend your typical day-to-day -day sense organ-based mental, intellectual, conceptual, collective consciousness plugged into experience. You're not going to realize your freedom from form if you don't have the bouncy power to bounce off of what your current perception is entrenched in, what it's soaked in, what it's conditioned by. You need personal will, you need power and intent and some ability to concentrate and hold a single thought or hold silence or hold an attentiveness to something at the expense of other things if you wish to realize more experientially, directly, and therefore as a result gain more conviction in that which you've experienced if you want to experience it. If you're in a weak state of mind, you're just sort of like uh, depressed and lethargic and da, 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 pessimistic maybe, you're not going to typically alter your experiential experience. But if that's the case, first of all, the, the road to any change is acceptance of what is. You can't fight what is. You can be frustrated with it, that's okay. You cannot like it, that's okay. But you have to accept, be okay with the fact that it's the way it appears to be right now. And that's the first way to change. So what you can do if you're in such a state, when you're, if you're personally weak, if your will is not trained, if you have never learned concentration, you're highly distracted, your, your thoughts don't have a lot of coherence, they don't have a lot of strength or power or, or samadhi kind of quality. And you're kind of lethargic, maybe. Like you just say, ugh, meditation, ugh, I am. Or like, ugh, um, change, or whatever. For whatever reasons, you know, conditioning, um, old age, maybe, physical weakness can play into it, because it is all connected, experientially. Yeah. Uh, maybe hormone imbalance, maybe brain chemistry, lack, uh, supplement, whatever. It can be so many things. So it's not helpful to have this image of, oh, it would be ideal if I'm in this perfect state of concentration and my will is balanced with my faith and I want enlightenment more than anything else and yet I'm empowered as an individual and now I'm going to attain this mystical state and I'm going to enter samadhi and go beyond samadhi and go, to oh. If that's not available in that moment or ever, then it makes no sense to beat yourself up about it. Right? That just doesn't help. It just makes you more frustrated about who you think you are. So then, da, 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 <laughs> I encourage 
And I always encourage for every individual, but then especially I encourage the path of conviction rather the path of experience. The path of conviction versus the path of concentration or will. Um, also, sur the path of surrender can help because it's a, good it's a good way to sort of gain a little bit of energy also to surrender, like because you're just in that state. So just surrender your depression, surrender your nihilism, surrender your pessimism, surrender your lethargy, surrender your weak state of mind and body, whatever it might be. Surrender your emotional victimhoodness. Surrender your snowflake makeup. <laughs> Surrender your political inclinations. And just by surrendering it and knowing and trusting and having faith that there is a great imperceivable power, oneness, intelligence, source, and just kind of, it's like you're falling asleep into that. It's like you're just dying into that. You're giving up into that. You can do that with relatively low amount of will, concentration, and energy. Because it's kind of like just relaxing. So, you know, but now you're doing it with a little bit of will, a little bit of faith, or a lot of faith, but a little bit of will to direct your tiredness, direct your uselessness, Direct your weakness towards surrendering, giving that up, disidentifying from it, not making it a problem, not associating it with yourself. And then you can have actually very um, pristine sense bubble up to the service of this knowingness and this conviction can increase. And or, and always I, I encourage the path of conviction along with your meditations and your path of concentration and will and faith which is to simply know that that's the way it is. That you are beyond everything that you perceive right now. You might not have a full-blown mystical direct experience of it where the whole universe blows up or reabsorbs itself and, and all there is left is an infinite vastness of perfection that cannot be described and is beyond all experiences. You may not have that direct contact to that extent, but you are already at that level. You're just not bridging your experiential level mm -hmm. to that level. But, you, but it is there. It is here. It is all that there is. So by deepening your conviction, you're disengaging from your identification with form and experience and this and that distortion. And you just know that you're free without seeking any proof for it, without seeking any experience of it. No experiential confirmation required. It will up-level your experiential realm, too. It will bump up your density of consciousness, your vibratory rate of consciousness. It will show you with greater transparency and greater precision and greater clarity and greater brightness that that's the case. It will confirm it. But true faith, true conviction can be had from any level of consciousness, at least hypothetically, as long as there is that desire yeah, And this is why the old direct path of satsang, of direct transmission and direct teaching, Nisargadatta style, I would say. That's why I also really like the Nisargadatta path or that lineage because his teacher before him was also very much expounding in this way of conviction. Just accept what I'm telling you. Yeah. Stop meditating. Sometimes they would say things like that. Like, don't even meditate. Yeah. Just accept what I'm telling you right now. To just be like, where is beyond location? Like, where is there literally no reference point to anything else? It's like, and you have, it's like, swipe the whole thing. Like, you have to get rid of the whole context. Yep. Yeah, it's not that complicated. It's just, it requires, if you want to have a direct experience of it, so to speak, direct realization, it requires a really subtle understanding and an ability to maintain attentiveness to that subtlety. Like, 
turning the substratum of imagination itself, of experience itself, of consciousness itself, of I am itself into a bouncy trampoline that you can realize yourself as not that from. But it's not that complicated. It's everything that you can experience has at its root the knowingness. Knowingness itself, which is like space. It's like pure. So again, like I was starting to say, the path of experience, the path of meditation, the path of purification is very powerful because it will grant you direct experiential realization that in most cases will deepen your conviction more than if you're just deepening your conviction from a weak state of consciousness. So it is a powerful path, but it does require full engagement and practice and repetition and continuity and consistency over typically many years of purifying the I am from all of its associations. Because the more you give up this, not this, I'm not this, not this, a new sensation arises that's subtler than the one before it. And then it's maybe like, oh, okay, I'm not this. So then I'm the sensation that then arises. But then you're like, no, I'm not that either. And then an even subtler feeling of beingness, presence, knowingness, consciousness is there. But it still comes with a sensation or a, a vague nebulous feeling of location. Then you're like, but I'm also not that. That's still the perception. It's still the experience. It's still illusion. Experience is illusion because there is nowhere for anything to exist. It's like a video game. It doesn't really exist. The world you're traversing isn't really there. It's an experience projected, but it's nothing. You're literally looking at nothing. Everything is nothing, and then nothing becomes your everything. So you purify the I am until you get to this really subtle level where it's just this luminous, self-luminous, bright, empty, clear, pure knowingness this radiant knowingness, the light of God, the empty yet full, the empty full nature of just the nature of God without any association with particular form or object perception. It's just the essence. It's just the beingness itself, which every experience has in common. There is no experience without that beingness. So you want to get really clear on that. I want to purify that, that all this is just empty beingness, just formless beingness, just the power of knowingness, projecting things where there is actually nothing. And then you get this, you know, experiential confirmation of oneness and indivisibility, inseparability, non-location, formlessness, so forth, so forth. Those can become their own traps if you want to proceed. But then you kind of just go to the root. Again, it's very simple. You go to the root, which is the pure knowingness itself. It's very simple, but it's very subtle. That's what makes it difficult. It's not that it's complex. It's exceedingly simple. What makes it challenging is the subtlety required to grok this in direct attention, direct recognition. But when you are able to maintain that sort of emptiest substratum of pure beingness, knowingness, consciousness, awareness itself, then you can throw out even that. You can realize, oh, that's still an experience. Therefore, it's an illusion. Then what in the world am I? And at that threshold, there's no words for that. You, you intuitively navigate it at that point with no mind almost involved at all. It's like a, very hard to describe, but it's like moving backwards through layers of thick black curtain in a dark room. So you're just like, it's not this normal. <laughs> and then you can have this blowout where the whole, just a cessation of the entire experience land, except you remain. This is slightly different than the other cessation where you go unconscious and then you come back and you're like, what the fuck? This is where there's a full cessation, but you as the absolute somehow still remain in constant, and comprehension of yourself. That's the most profound, direct, total, complete, absolute, quote-unquote, experience, which it's not an experience, that I have accessed. And that 
that deepened my conviction, like yeah. quantum leaped my conviction which then on a day-to-day -day basis where there is mind and attention and world experiences, the video game appears, there is that sort of black hole in the substratum. The consciousness is no longer solid. Presence, beingness is no longer ultimately real. And so there's this gaping sort of like a hole in a spaceship where there's just, it's sucked vacuum. You could say the contents of the spaceship is still, are still there, the interior is still there, but it's sucked out from all this air um, and its solidity and denseness. It's kind of like that. And you can get some sense of that just purely through conviction, purely, purely through faith and sort of an understanding, even intellectually, like, oh yeah, it does make sense. Intu it's like the intuitive faculty of the deepest portion of your beingness kind of links to your intellectual understanding as you receive these teachings. Mm -hmm. So you kind of get an image of it, a form of it, and that starts to contact this deep intuitive recognition, this instinctive knowingness. And just you just allow that to be your conviction and you don't try to force yourself too hard to stay concentrated on it or to have an experiential blowout experience of it. You just accept that faith, that conviction. Then your experience of it also deepens, but it's like you already feel free, even if your experience doesn't reflect it fully. So the path of conviction is to simply know, believe, have faith that it, that's the way it is. And then you, your, the contextual feeling of your everyday experience already changes. The nuance already changes. You can't take things so seriously. You can't identify as much because what you have in the back of your mind is this conviction. That can lead to certain distortions that can lead to certain assumptions and conclusions that are not backed up by a holistically aligned experiential realization. So it's something to watch for, to not come to any relative relational conclusions based on this conviction, especially if you can't back it up with full direct experience. But it does definitely help attain more of that realization and it changes the nuance of your day-to-day -day experience. path of total faith or conviction. But I think it's fair to say, people kind of have to understand this, if you wish to really, really directly absorb your experience, your experiential state, if you want the consciousness that you have as your direct experience of me to become absorbed into that, even the God state or the absolute, the source beyond that, it is the work of an athlete. It is, it is something you'll have to do every day. You'll have to be mindful of this uh, pursuit. You'll have to desire this pursuit every day, not just for one minute, but like on an ongoing basis. It's like an athlete training eight hours a day. If that's what you want, but you don't have to. I mean, it doesn't really change the reality of things because you can't change the reality of things using illusion, which is experience. But it does change your experience. <laughs> so if you want to change your experience, if you want to know experientially what it's like to be God, what it's like to be as the absolute infinite eternity that's going to be here 250 trillion years from now, and that's you, if you want to know that while you're having this body-mind experience, prepare to sacrifice a whole lot of things. A whole lot of other desires. A whole lot of other types of experiences that are of a more worldly nature. Not that you can't practice while you're doing it, but if you're practicing while you're doing worldly things, you're not really invested and you're not really getting out of the experience the worldly sort of egotistical satisfaction that you would otherwise get. You can attain much greater bliss and freedom and all that, but it requires it requires a lot of work, in my experience. And I think this is reflected in almost every one of the rare examples that have gone really deep with this throughout history. And they've all said that, or for the most part, they've said that, that this requires the totality of devotion, of will, meditation, practice. 
So it just depends on how deep, how reflective you want your experience to be of that realization. But ultimately, enlightenment is a realization. It's not an experience. It's something that you know and that you can't forget. Because you can't forget that which is not an experience. You can only forget experiences. So, and I can still, like I've said many times, I can still change the nuance or the flavor of my experience. For lack of a better word, I can go higher or more absorbed using the power of focus and attention and consciousness, or I can go less absorbed and I can be more physically focused. I can be more solid in a, in a way. I can project myself as more solid. I can uh, dissolve that this, this solidity, the projection of that. So within the experiential realm, there is a, a nuanced difference that fluctuates, that is context-based, that is will-based in a sense. But the conviction is always there. And people can practice conviction without having mystical experiences. Mm -hmm. It's important to realize that because people often chase the mystical experience. Mm. And for the most part, mystical experiences require a lot of concentration. Which requires will and discipline and training and so forth. And there's no, there's no rule for this. It's not like you should. That's also something to realize. You don't have to. It's entirely dependent on what you want. But if you want to win a gold medal at the Olympics for uh, swimming, probably going to have to train for that. If you want to have a ability to have an ongoing direct mystical sort of experience that's reflective of the absolute. If that's something that you want, then training is required. If you want to anchor in that realization to such a degree that's super pristine and, and ever radiating into mind, body, spirit, illusion, then you'll need that attentiveness to attain such a depth of realization. This is my current sort of view anyway, exposition of this. But just to know that that's the way it is can drop you in too. And to then just live your life. Do the thing you were going to do anyway. Don't not do the thing because of an image of emptiness. Do the thing. If you're going to smoke, smoke. Don't not smoke to try to be more empty. Do the thing and practice while you're doing the thing. Because it's an attention shift. It's a conviction shift. It's not an activity shift as much. To some degree, you might want to actually have certain sessions where you sit down and don't move your body for a couple hours. But in on the whole, for the most part, you do what you do. You do, perform your duties, you do your everyday activities. And it's a shift that happens at a subtle level in the background. You want to bring your attention to the background, that intuitive faculty of recognition. And you want to more and more anchor yourself there, in that bridge between this world and the reality between the illusion of the video game and the reality of the emptiness of the video game or the freedom, which is free of anything, free of the video game. Because the video game has no existence, which shouldn't be a mental conclusion. It should be conviction. You should live with people and in the video game according to the rules of the video game, for the most part. A little rebellion from time to time is good. But, you know, don't jump off a cliff because the cliff doesn't exist. Don't um, 
go punching people in the face because they don't exist. Do, you know, do your thing, live a relatively normal life, chop wood, carry water, boring analogy. And people, mm -hmm. people give that way too much credit. But in a sense, you know, you're doing what you're doing. There's different expressions, different incarnations for different purposes at different times of relevance within the illusion. So don't associate someone's behavior or your own behavior with your state of enlightenment. Again, don't use this as a permission slip to be an asshole and call it mere consciousness and say, this is just my expression. The realization's got to be sincere. The work needs to be done. But upon deepening that realization, even having full conviction, there is no telling what your version of chopping wood and carrying water looks like. It can be very complex, it can be very complicated, it can seem very engaged and involved in the world, or it can seem very non-engaged with the world. But the form is not the thing. Because if you're sitting, it's just as empty as if you're acting. If you're politically engaged, it's just as empty. It doesn't change the nature of things. You cannot undo the emptiness conviction realization by doing things with your body and your mind and your speech. It doesn't change the nature of reality. So disassociate the domain of expression and purification of the vehicle and the shifting of interests with the direct a perception or knowledge of the nature of things. I feel for me it's been a little bit of a backwards experience where my desire and my will was so, so big to really understand reality. Um, so it was, it was just like one burning, piercing desire so that when um so that's when you sort of uh, popped up in my field of awareness and then um in this one session um i penetrated like all the way and popped out and exactly the black curtains was you know it was funny you mentioned that so but so i had that realization like the full thing so i i sort of well, not sort of, I um, got what I wanted, but now I'm sort of working backwards in getting the foundation right. That is uh, at least how I also like last night, where, <coughs> you know, mm -hmm. it was like the air castle in a way, mm -hmm. um, like now getting the, all the other building blocks aligned with what I actually know to be true. Mm -hmm. Valid. Yeah. Yeah. So it's... Uh, yeah, it's, been, it's a bit of a... I even had a session once with um, a medium and she channeled that <laughs> uh, there was quite a fight going on in the other realms about the fact that I was allowed to have that realization without, uh -huh. the, <laughs> without the foundation in mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they were uh, slapping around some higher selves that... <laughs> but yeah, but she wanted it and, you know... She was ready or whatever. Yeah, ultimately, you know, <laughs> what you want the most, if you really, really want it, you will get it. Yeah. So I got it, but yeah. uh, it still seems that I do need now to put some other... Uh, yeah, well, I'm just uh, guided to put that more in. Yeah, uh, I think... Uh, foundational. I think like, some version of that is, is quite common. People have... Because they're in a stuck state. They don't know what they start spiritually seeking and it builds in energy, builds in energy. Doo -doo -doo, then I have this pop out without really knowing anything really yet, exactly. without understanding the mechanics, mm -hmm. vibrationally, energetically, dimension, all that stuff. So they don't understand the video game, their relationship to it. And, and they just have this mystical, direct, penetrative realization and then typically, yeah, you're not exempt from doing the work on a relative level. But it does help to have had that realization. Absolutely. It's like the conviction, what you said, um, yeah. sort of puts everything. And I'm a, I'm a proponent of, of or for? I'm a proponent of or a proponent for? Of. I think you can use them both, but of is more common. So I'm a proponent of that direct piercing desire 
um, I always try to inspire and encourage that to at least some degree with a dose of acceptance of whatever it is and that really ultimately it doesn't matter. But I mean, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be where I am consciousness wise, vibrationally speaking, however you want to say that, had I not had those very strong bouts of desire and yearning and seeking. So I, I am a advocate of the seeking energy. I think it should not be diffused and replaced with partially satisfying intellectual or psychological conclusions or answers or methods. I think the, the true burning desire is the key to unlock any, any of the real doors that matter. And <clears throat> there is no real deepening in the realization of God without a strong desire. Yeah, the only thing, at least from my perspective, what I felt is that if I had been less um, stable yeah. in my... I mean, there was a, a, a level of knowing myself and I did do, you know, work um, on the knowing of self before really going like, I want to know the truth. If you don't have that, then it can be quite uh, destabilizing. Yep. If you do, like, just go have that realization, and then you're like, what the fuck? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you don't have a solid personality, um, that's at least uh, fairly self-accepting and has some stability in that sense. Yeah, it can be very disheveling and confusing. I think that's probably also why you were hesitant at a certain point to teach about the mm -hmm. absolute. Yes, right, exactly. Because uh, it doesn't it doesn't really matter to teach about God and love and light and presence and consciousness. That's all sort of a gradual path, like you were saying about the I am. Mm -hmm. It takes work. It's yeah. something that you have to cultivate. Right. It's a realization that just deepens with experience and practice and attention. And the effect that it has is that it purifies the mind, body, spirit, complex energies, which are very complex in nature, cannot be understood intellectually. It's just the way that, just like when you're playing a video game, you're just understanding, oh, I go left here, I go right, I jump over this obstacle. You don't understand how all the components are programmed. You don't see the matrix, right? And we're not, for the most part, we're not meant to see the matrix in this particular third density incarnational experience. We're meant to be veiled and just have the experience of the video game in action itself, the components as they're produced. But it's all generated, even though it doesn't exist, it's generated with as the illusion in very complex, energetic, and super intelligent ways that we intellectually cannot grok. So, but when we rest in that consciousness, when we start to recognize the nature of the video game being made of color, of light, of pixels, and it's just projections of that, it doesn't really have location, it doesn't really have objects, it's just pixels, it's just perception, it's just light, it's just isness, it's just appearance. It, that's, for the most part, a very solid, gradual, safe, comforting way to have someone align their mind-body-spirit complexes and purify their energies to be more intuitively intelligent over time, more and more intelligent, more and more stable, more and more self-accepting, more and more self-knowing. Penetrating the absolute is like turning off the video game. And anything, everything you ever knew yourself through, by, in relationship to, in contrast to, is gone. Or it's seen as absolutely non-existent, as illusory. It has, it's a completely different paradigm. We're not you. We're, we're no longer used for millions of years. We're not used to being the reality. We're only used to being inside the video game. So mm -hmm. if you suddenly unplug that, just like they say in the Matrix, past a certain age, they no longer free people's minds because they can't handle the shock, the difference. It's kind of like that, but at a larger scale. So for the most part, I stopped teaching directly, transmitting directly that avenue to a penetrative realization of the absolute. I can talk about it and help deepen people's conviction, but keeping it more casual. Mm -hmm. 
so they can take it at their own pace. And because people want it when they hear it, they want it, but they don't know what they're in for. It's more ego. It's so also, yeah, it's right? ego. It's for the most part, it's ego and vanity, and for some part, it's a true deep desire for that realization. But a lot of it is vanity and ego, and wanting to attain so the highest. And I'm super guilty of that in my own past, and maybe still to a degree. <laughs> but um. But it's such a different reality. That no ordinary mind is ready for that realization. You can't be ready. It doesn't matter how advanced you are even. You can't be ready for it. But you can have a stable mind-body-spirit complex that's been purified. Its energies have been aligned for the most part. So now you can take the hit. You can absorb. You can receive. You can integrate a realization of such a different reality of reality mm -hmm. that it's okay and it's even very exciting at that point but what made me able to penetrate a direct realization exclusive realization of the absolute multiple times is the fact that I applied what I read which is casual it's not a guided meditation it's not like Nisargadatta is uh, sitting in my room and he's transmitting and he's guiding I'm just reading lines. I'm just reading texts. I'm just using my intuition. I'm just using my intellect. And I'm deciphering it. And I am choosing to apply an enormous amount of willpower to integrate these knowingness, these bits of knowledge, these keys. And I'm choosing to guide myself in the most intense way I possibly can. So that's me passing that, uh, you know, the rite of passage or whatever you want to call that. That's me doing the work. So I realized, oh, I can't just, I can't just chew it all out for people in a direct transmissive way and almost like give them the experience. They have to, they have to decide to do that themselves. So I can talk about it. I can instruct it, but I can't directly transmit and guide it. What do you guys get out of this? Well, I said I was very, very interested in the two domains within the enlightenment yep. path. It made a lot of sense to me. And uh, Is it validating in any way? Like in a well, way? I understand why I was, you know, very drawn to the direct conviction yep. teaching and not very drawn to the other. But right. you also explained why both can help. Right. So, it, you know, uh, nice. I, I shouldn't avoid the uh, more uh, work through it kind of uh, uh, guidance. And, and the way, <clears throat> like for someone like you and for everyone at certain times, I would suggest that if you do feel, if you do feel a little bit of sort of like a, an attentive or disciplined mode come on where you're like, oh, I'm, I'm curious to deepen something along those lines, mm. T still take the conviction route, but let yeah. that be the practice. Oh, yeah. That's the most effortless. Right. It's oh, like absolutely. Just, it's, yeah. like, it's like marinating in yeah. a conscious attention of your conviction. Yeah. We're not changing anything, mm -hmm. not trying to concentrate on this or that state. Right. But actually, it's like con concentrating on your effortless conviction. That is already right. the case. Yeah. yeah. And that is a form of then allowing that more meditative confirmation to occur. Right. I, I couldn't do otherwise because, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I yeah. <laughs> but I love the idea of using that in, like, you're in the place of a meditative or a penetrative meditation to, like, put that focus toward the conviction itself, deepening and recognizing mm -hmm. the conviction. conviction. It's very, in many ways, it's the most direct way to do it. Huh. If you have a lot of concentration power and you apply it to that as your meditation, it's like a, it's like meditating in the way of non-meditating, by direct conviction. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it, it can very directly lead to mystical confirmations or like altered states of consciousness where it just sort of starts to marinate into your experience. Because we're at a moment-to-moment -moment basis, we always have, we're always actively having faith or confidence in something. Mm -hmm. There's no other way around it. So, 
if you shift that to your understand your intuitive slash intellectual understanding of the absolute, your conviction in the absolute reality and freedom, the total the total infinite nature of your freedom. If you become more confident in that actively, it's it's just a gentle coaxing whenever you think about it. Again, like two to five seconds. No, I'm already free. Boom. Just like deepen that conviction. It's very effortless. But if you apply some concentrative power to that, it can very directly give you an actual feeling of freedom, so to speak. It can sort of breathe into your experience. It's like opening a back window. And you get that breeze from the absolute without having to change anything about the appearances, about the sensations as they are. It's just a conviction, very subtle, very direct. If your conviction is strong in that moment, in, in any moment, then the personal ironing out of the distortions uh, happens quite automatically. Because mm -hmm. it, it's this, it's the conviction meeting the triggers, and it's the conviction meeting the patterns, and it's the conviction meeting the distortions um, in your consciousness. When you meet that with the conviction of the absolute freedom, they are ironed out very naturally. So, it's. But would you say it's a two-way street then? What's the other street? So the other street would be like. Working more on the personality self allows for more conviction into... Um, Not so much, no. Uh, work, like as a person, as a person working on your personal stuff is in a sense a state of lack of conviction. Mm -hmm. And whatever you gain from that is going to lead to uh, perhaps a more transparent experience. Mm -hmm or mind-body-spirit complex. So that in time can lead to a deeper realization through the experiential path that will deepen your conviction into freedom. But again, the conviction to freedom really has nothing to do with what you do or don't do, what happens or doesn't happen on the personal level or on the mind-body-spirit complex level. There is a correlation because there will be a connection made through your conviction, but then it's like, because you're in that moment, you're convinced, you're deeply convinced of that absolute freedom, there's also a sense of being beyond the doer, being beyond the personality. So you, it doesn't feel like you're actively working on anything. It's more like you're observing this movie that's happening on its own. And it can feel personal, but even that is happening in the movie. And it's because your conviction stays strong, that light of that awareness is purifying whatever shows up in that moment. So it doesn't feel like doership or work as a person. Mm -hmm. cool. The more purified mind-body-spirit complex will naturally, automatically have a greater comprehension of the God state, but not necessarily of the absolute. Mm -hmm. But it will be more aligned on a day-to-day -day basis with that primordial energy of awareness, love, light, of which all the personal distortions are ultimately made, and they are realigned with that. And in the path of cosmological evolution, the structure of it, like everything first is brought up to the level of God consciousness. Everything is unified and dissolved, if you will, into the ocean of awareness, love, light, mm -hmm. the impersonal, universal presence, or I amness, or beingness. And then like from a linear point of view anyway, then the beingness becomes so heavy with awareness, love, light, that it starts to realize the emptiness beyond it, if you will. Nice. So, so yeah, and so the difference would be, so it's more the distinction between God states or absolute. Like In a way. The absolute, yeah, then yeah. I can totally see what you... All mean. the work ultimately leads up to the God state. Yeah. And then... There's a point of collapse that beyond which there is no work or right. work loses its meaning because mm -hmm. there's nothing to work with. Yeah. I mean, you can have that conviction in there's nothing to work with now mm -hmm. without falling into the trap of then becoming 
a complacent person, right? So, but that's why I say if it's genuine, then you'll it will balance your distortions, yeah, and it will balance your the traps and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's not that conviction doesn't require any attentiveness; it does require some will. You need to choose your conviction, and yeah. then it deepens, right? If you don't choose, if you don't have no will, then nothing happens. You just become a rock that can move, but <laughs> similar. Yeah. So however you turn it, will is involved. Call it desire, call it will, call it consciousness. Even in the path of direct conviction, it's involved, but it just remains at such a subtle level that it doesn't require any change in the experience. And that too can either be done with great faith and intensity or with less faith and intensity, which determines the speed in which, with which the conviction deepens and empties out your experience. All righty. Well, there's no end to this because it never started. But. <laughs> oh, is that right? Okay. So are we <laughs> Oh, is that right? Okay. off the hook? <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. You never were on. Ah, okay. No, that's just another concept. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yes, the yes, session never answer. began. It never, you know, yeah. where, where did the session start? Where exactly does it end? It's all make-believe. Mm. Well, I was thinking it could end about now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs>